Good evening, good evening, good evening to all our YouTube listeners. You're tuned in to the Bible Show Truth Hour here on POET Radio. Our subject matter today is, are you a spokesperson for Satan? Well, Black Ice, what, what do you mean, am I a spokesperson for Satan? What, what are you saying? What, 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 what are you alluding to, Black Ice? Let us know. We, we need to know what it is you're talking about because we don't know what you're talking about right now. Again, are you, have you become a spokesperson for Satan, brothers and sisters? That's tonight's lesson. That's tonight's show. We're going to go ahead and get right into it, brothers and sisters, without any further ado. Brother Joe, we're going to start this off at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to start this at verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 6. Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 6. Everybody, I can't share this video today because um, we're having problems with the internet, but I'm asking you to share this video today. Share it in all of the Bible clubs that you belong to. Share it in all of the groups, the Bible groups that you belong to. Do that for us tonight. Okay, Brother Joe, we're going to start this off at Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Tonight's title is, Have You Become a Spokesperson for Satan? Let's look at Satan's first spokesperson. First spokesperson on this earth. Let's see who it was. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. Go ahead, Brother Joe. You know, the more so than any beast on the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So, brothers and sisters, Brother Joe just read Genesis chapter 3, and he just read verses 1 through 3. And here it is, Satan, this fallen angelic being, who appeared to Eve in the garden, who began conversating with her, and the Lord said, that was your first mistake, because I told you, don't eat off of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is none other than Satan. Brothers and sisters, don't be confused by these metaphors, such as the word tree. Tree only means something that's deeply rooted. Satan being an angel or a fallen angel, brothers and sisters, but in his original state, he was an angel. And so he was deeply rooted, brothers and sisters. In the word of God, angels in their original state are holy and they are spirits. So Satan was one of the holy spirits in heaven, brothers and sisters. So he knows the plan for man. He has much more knowledge than Eve has because remember, she just came into existence. So he's talking to her. She's not supposed to be talking to him. And he said, well, did God say don't eat of this tree? And, and, and if you eat of this tree, you should surely die. She repeated to him what God had instructed her. So now let's go to verse 4, Brother Joe. Um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God did know that in the day he eat thereof, his eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And again, the day that you eat of this tree, your eyes will be open and you will be as God's, knowing both good and evil, brothers and sisters. You will be as God's, knowing both good and evil. Okay? So, now, Satan has given her some information. Okay? Now, again, trees don't talk. Snakes don't talk. So, the word snake was used as an acronym to describe his sneaky characteristics, his slithering, sneaky 
characteristics, but it tells you in Revelations, the 20th chapter, who that old serpent was, that dragon, which is called Satan and the devil. Okay? So now, here's something that's interesting that's going to happen. Now we get to verse 6. Now we find out that Eve, in her rebellion to the commandment of God, has now become the spokesperson for Satan. Let's see what Eve does at Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Go ahead, my brother. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one alive, she took all the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So as you see right here, Brother Joe, it says that she gave Adam this information that Satan gave her. Is that what it says, Brother Joe, that he she gave it to Adam and he did eat? So, brothers and sisters, here, brothers and sisters, you see that Eve has just become a spokesperson for Satan the devil. Again, she has just come a spokesperson for Satan the devil. Well, Black Ice, why are you talking about this? Why are you saying this? What does this have to do with us, Black Ice? Well, brothers and sisters, I'm saying this to say that we have to be very careful as to what information we disseminate that we are giving from other people to the listening party. Some of you all have a following and don't even know it. Some of you all have influence and don't even know it. So when you're beginning to share things, negative things, that people have shared with you, brothers and sisters, especially in a public form. You become a spokesperson for the author of the spirit of that information. And we know, brothers and sisters, either the author of the spirit of that information is going to be God or either the author of the spirit of that information is going to be the devil. Now, let's go to the book of Job, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of Job, and I'm going to show you how some of you got Satan in your inner circle, and you don't even know it. One of your friends, one of your co-workers, one of your family members, you got Satan in your circle, brothers and sisters, and you don't even know it. Now, those of us who study the Word of God and attend church, and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Bible calls us the children of God. Would you not agree? Anyone who submits their will to do the will of God, the Bible calls those persons the children of God. So if you're going to church, if you're trying to learn, if you're trying to study, if you're trying to develop that personal relationship with God, God calls those persons his children. But let's read about a group of his children who went to church, who studied his word, who knew the law, brothers and sisters. Let's read about a group of those people and see that they were still ignorant. See, it's not enough to know the name Jesus. It's not enough to just sing and praise and shout, brothers and sisters. That's not enough. We have to be educated on God, and the only way to be educated on God is to be educated on the Word of God. Not just by what mama told you or daddy told you or what you heard somebody say. No, brothers and sisters, you have to have a teacher who's going to teach you this book. And that's why every week on the Bible Show Truth Hour, we study in this book. We give you scriptural support. We don't just start with one scripture and just give you a whole life lesson based on that scripture. So let's find out who else was in the midst of Satan. Just like some of us are. 
Got Satan in our household. Got Satan on our job. Got we sitting in the lunchroom with Satan. We going out to smoke with Satan. We we got Satan in our car. We got Satan in our family. And we don't even know it. But we're supposed to be the children of God. We say Jesus every five minutes. We write Jesus on our posts. We write God on our posts. But don't recognize the spirit of Satan when we see him. Let's go to the book of Job, the first chapter. And let's go to verse 6. Let's find out these sons of God. Let's find out the interesting thing about these sons of God. Um, Job chapter 1, verse 6 through 12. Go ahead, my brother. Now there was a day when the Son of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Saint came also among them. Wait a minute. The, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came with them? Let me ask you a question. If you knew that there was a devil in your crew, would you take them to go meet your parent? Would you take them to go meet your mama? Well, evidently, brothers and sisters, these sons of God did not even know that it was Satan that was with them all along. But the Lord knew, brothers and sisters. And what did the Lord say in verse 2, Brother Joe? Job chapter 1, verse... Uh, I'm sorry, verse... Um, Job chapter 1, verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Which cometh thou? Then Satan, Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and forth in the earth, and from walking up and down in it, so Satan is all over the place, brothers and sisters. He's all over the place. Satan, where you coming from? Coming from up and down, to and fro, walking in the earth. I'm everywhere, Lord. You put me down here. I'm all in the middle of your people. And it's the same way in the church. Satan is right there in the middle of the church. And it's the same way on our job. Satan is right there in the middle of the job. And it's the same way in our households and in our families. Satan is right there in the midst of it. And how do we get in? Through your emotions, brothers and sisters. Through your hurt. Through your anger. Through your sadness. Through your sorrow. Even sometimes through your conceited happiness, brothers and sisters. We're going to go ahead and continue. Brother Joe, read it out 8 through 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man, a, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God, and entreweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, Do Job fear God for not? Mm-hmm. So he's basically saying, Job ain't fearing you for nothing, God. He's fearing you because you're protecting him. That's what he's saying. The only reason why Job is fearing you, God, is because you are protecting him. That's what he's saying, brothers and sisters. So, you know, he's saying, okay, well, God, if, if, if you're not protecting him and family, I'm sorry, uh, we got a bad connection, but if you call in to the show, you can hear the whole show. If you call in to the show. So somebody please put the call in number down there at the bottom and I'll try to do it also myself. Put the call in number um, down there at the bottom. But again, if you call in to the show, you can actually hear the show. So if you have any technical difficulty problems and the live feed cuts off, then you'll still be able to get it even if the live feed cut off. Okay, Brother Joe, so Satan is telling God the only reason why jo Job is worshiping you and honoring you, God, is because you're protecting him. But if you stop protecting him, God, then he's going to curse you to your face. Go ahead and pick up where you left off, Brother Joe. Hast not thou made an inch about him, and about his house, and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his sustenance is increased in the land. Here the whole show is going now. And okay. more than here, and about his house. I'm sorry, brother. Hold on. And 
on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his son. I'm, I'm sorry, brother. We had a little feedback right there. Like I said, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, brother. But hang in there with us, brothers and sisters. It's going to be all right. All right. So you're protecting him. That's the only reason why he's praising and worshiping you. Go ahead. Continue, my brother. Yeah, go ahead. Pick up from there. Okay. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So basically, brothers and sisters, God said, Okay, Satan. You're saying that the only reason why Job is worshiping me and honoring me is because I'm protecting him. I tell you what. I'm going to allow you to begin to persecute Job. I'm allowing you to. Okay? Shows you that Satan can't do anything without God's permission, brothers and sisters. And if you need permission from someone, then guess what? That's your boss. That's who your boss is. So, let's go ahead and pick it up now. And we're going to read verses 18 through 22. And I'm going to show you something because remember Eve became a spokesperson for Satan. We're going to show you right now how Job's wife, his wife, the closest thing to him, became a spokesperson for Satan, brothers and sisters. Now, I want you to keep in mind that the devil already said that he will curse you. Okay? At verse 11, he said, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. So first, Satan told God to do it. He said, I want you to do it, Lord. You put forth your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. Underline the words, curse you to your face. Okay, we read 12 and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power now. So the Lord said, I'm not going to do him like that. I'm going to allow you to do him like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to verses 18 through 22. Go ahead, my brother. Now, I want to set this up. Satan took away all of his cattle, all of his sheep, all of his cattle, all the stuff that made Job a wealthy man and rich, Satan took it all away. But that didn't hurt as much as when Satan did this. Go ahead, read Job 1 and 18. Go ahead, my brother. And, and 19. Now, okay. While he was yet speaking, there came also a letter and said, Thy son and thy daughter was eating and drinking wine in thy eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So Satan ended up killing Job's children. His sons, brothers and sisters. First, Satan took away all of his sheets, all of his goats, and all of that stuff that made him wealthy and powerful. Now, Satan goes a step further, and he kills Job's sons. Wow. So now, brothers and sisters, Job has really gotten upset. But I want you to read verse 22. Go ahead, Job 1 and 22. And all this Job seen, not more charged, God foolishly. So out of all this, all of his cattle taken away, all of his sheep taken away, his sons were killed. It says, in all this, Job still sinned not. He didn't sin, nor charge God foolishly. Now Satan sinned that he can't win. God said that this man was a righteous man. Satan doubted him. He said, take away all his stuff, God. Watch him curse you to your face. But now check out Satan. He goes back to God to renegotiate with God over Job. Let's go to um, Job chapter 2 and verse 1 through 8. Job chapter 2, 
verses 1 through 8. Now, this is the example of how we must carry ourselves as Christians. Go ahead, my brother. Job chapter 2, verse 1 through 8. Again, there was a day when the Son of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From which cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and forth into the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, so we're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there, Brother Joe, because it kind of repeats the same thing, but it's a continuation, brothers and sisters. But now Satan is going to get even deeper because, see, now Satan is about to deal with Job's health. Anytime we get afflicted with cancer, congestive heart failure, diabetes, gout, all kind of inflammations and things that happen in our life, we start thinking different. We start getting scared. We start dealing in the mind of fear. So Satan knew that if he affected Job's health, now I didn't took away all of his cattle, his sheep, his goats. I didn't even kill his sons. Job didn't sin. He didn't curse God. But now let me start dealing with Job's health. I'm going to start taking away Job's health. Let's see what Satan said at John, I'm sorry, Job chapter 2, verse 4. Job chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Now, I remember in the first chapter, he said he's going to curse you to your face. Let's see how he repeats it again at Job chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Go ahead, my brother. And the Lord said unto Satan, from which cometh thou? And the saint answered the Lord, and said, From going to and forth in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hath thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear, feareth God, and cheweth evil, and still he holds his fast integrity, although thou movest thee against him? To destroy him without cause? And Saint answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will, he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy faith. Now here it is again. He's saying, Put forth your hand on his flesh, make Job sick, touch his body. And watch them curse you to your face, brothers and sisters. But we're going to go ahead and keep going. So let's go ahead to verse 7 and 8. And then I want to explain to you something at verse 9. Verse 7 and 8. Go ahead, Brother Joe. So we're taking forth from the presence of the Lord. And smoke God with soul of oils from the soles of his foot. Unto his crown. And he took him a portrait, or scrapped himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Now, here's something interesting. Let's see who became the spokesperson for Satan in the story of Job. You're going to find out the same situation that happened with Adam and Eve ended up happening with Job, where Job's wife became the spokesperson. For Satan. Remember, Satan then told God twice. You do this to him, he'll curse you to your face. Now, let's look at the closest person to Job and see what she said to Job. J Job chapter 2, verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Hurt God and die? And what did Job... And what did Job tell his wife in verse 10? So he said unto her, Thou speakest as well of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hands of God? And shall not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips? Brothers and sisters, 
Job went through hell. Job went through hell, brothers and sisters. Even got to the point where his wife relayed the message to him that Satan relayed to God. Watch him curse you to your face and die. And his wife is encouraging him. Why don't you just curse God and die? Satan, brothers and sisters, that spirit comes out in our emotions, brothers and sisters. Our love, our hate, our anger, our sadness, our bitterness. Have you become a spokesperson for Satan? That's tonight's question. That's tonight's subject, brothers and sisters. We've already read about two people in the Bible. Eve and Job's wife who had become spokespersons for Satan. Let's go ahead in the New Testament. Let's look at Jesus. Let's look at the life and times of Jesus, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. The book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. And let's see how one of Jesus' disciples became a spokesperson for Satan. Now, we did read this last week. But last week we were dealing with a little bit different subject, but God put it on my heart to revisit this scripture and tonight's subject. Have you become a spokesperson for Satan, brothers and sisters? We saw how Eve became one, how Job's wife became one. Now let's see how one of the disciples, matter of fact, the chief apostle. Became a spokesperson for Satan. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 22 and 23. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 22 and 23. Let's go my brother. Then Peter took him. And began to rebuke him. Saying. Be it far from thee Lord. This shall not be unto thee. So let's stop right there. And let's go back. Jesus had told his disciples that. I'm going to suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and I will be killed and raised again on the third day. So Peter said, I don't want to hear you talking all that stuff that you're talking, Jesus. You think I'm going to let somebody come and put their hands on you? I'll kill them for you, Jesus. Jesus' mission was to come in the world to die. That was his mission, brothers and sisters. He came as a sacrifice offering. He knew that and Satan and Satan knew that too. But because Peter loved Jesus so much, that's how Satan can even enter, enter um, in you through your love for somebody. Trying to protect somebody, Satan could even enter into you in those moments when you think that you're doing the right thing. Let's look at what Jesus said in verse 23, Matthew 16, verse 23. See, go ahead, my brother. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou servest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So, in other words, brothers and sisters, Peter became the spokesperson for Satan. At that moment, so much so that Jesus turned around and he looked at Peter and he said, get thee behind me, Satan. You have offended me. Well, what did he say that offended Jesus so much? He talked about retaliating against Jesus's enemies, brothers and sisters. Well, the word of God says, pray for your enemies. Love those who spite you. Well, Peter wasn't interested in that because Peter at that moment was moved by the spirit of Satan. Peter became the spokesperson for Satan. Have you become the spokesperson for Satan? Now, brothers and sisters, how do we conduct ourselves as children of God? How do we conduct ourselves even when, we, when, we, when we've lost our job, when we've gotten divorced? From our husband or our wife. When our children have become rebellious and the household is in turmoil. How do we conduct ourselves as Christians, brothers and sisters? First, we got to start 
with our thinking. See, we too busy acting off of emotion versus the spirit of God. And how do we act according to the spirit of God? Because the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Let's go to the book of Philippians, the second chapter. Let's learn how to conduct ourselves as Christians, brothers and sisters, as children of God. Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Let's learn how to conduct ourselves even in troublous times. Let's go, my brother. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Let's go. If there be, therefore, any compilation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any worship of the Spirit, if any vows and mercy, so he said, if it be any fellow, fellowship of the Spirit and any bows and mercies, continue at verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And he said, and he said <laughs> fulfill my joy. I want you to fulfill my joy. What is my joy? That you have the same love being of one accord and of one mind, brothers and sisters. I want you to understand that Satan, through the Gentiles who are ruling the world right now, has programmed God's people. Programmed God's people so much that we are willing to kill one another. That we are willing to rape Go to war, shoot, rob one another, steal from one another. We have been programmed to hate anything that looks like us. But my question to you is this, brothers and sisters. Knowing that we were programmed. Every car has a computer in it. The new cars has a computer in it. And someone programs that computer. Your computer's at home. Somebody is programming your computer before you buy it off the shelf. Now, if your computer ends up not operating the way that you thought it would operate, and it's susceptible to viruses, brothers and sisters, that will take over your system and make it do what it wants it to do, and steal all of your personal identification you don't get mad at the computer you get mad at the hacker brothers and sisters someone has hacked the mind of our people someone has brainwashed and re and reprogrammed our people so is it right for us to get mad at our people or do we get mad at satan who used the gentiles to program